Zim is going to check on Dante after Dante has just woken up from the surgery, getting the alien removed uh, from the chest, and and just kind of assess Dante's uh, you know mental status. And be like, you with us? How are you holding up? I'd come here like shh, shh, <laughs> quiet. Oh, that that chili, and I we kind of noticed, and I was like, oh, you you guys found out, huh? Yeah, huh? we found out. So I, I guess there was an alien inside me, and uh, it was I don't think it was the chili that was making me feel bad. Sorry. How's Hammer looking? Hammer's looking shocked, and he looks at Dante. And he's like, "Okay, that thing's been in you the whole time." I, I, th I think so. At first, I thought it was the chili, but then I thought I felt something move, and then after seeing everything burst out. I thought one of them was inside me and I just kind of knew. And when one of the aliens came and was right there in front of my face, I could kind of sense it. And it was just a weird, weird feeling. Oh, you didn't think it necessary to advise us of this problem? Yeah. Well, <laughs> the way you guys were handling the situation, I didn't feel like, being a part of the crew with the bolt gun in the chest or the incinerator unit. Hammer like, yeah, yeah, Hammer sure. like looks at Chaplin. Yeah, yeah, you know Mason was going crazy in there with that with that incinerator. We helped. Um... Those individuals were already stuck <laughs> to a wall and were beyond saving. We did, did in fact successfully remove one from a previous individual. If you yeah. didn't call. And I didn't know where your guys' uh, state of affairs were in regards to me. That was early on. This is a, a little bit later. Things kind of kind of changed, and I just I didn't want to take any chances. Next time you get an alien inside your chest, just let us know early on because we're now pretty good at this. I'd say that's two good ones. I'm sure, it didn't come. It didn't come from the chili then. I I don't know where it came from. But Pinky That's promise weird. you won't incinerate me if another one gets inside me. Are you gonna I mean unless you're stuck to a wall already where... got I mean Sorry, well, uh... I to Pinky <laughs> promise anything is I no longer have pinkies. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> uh I'm not making any promises at this point. Then I'll I'll Just take it under advisement. It Hammer Hammer reaches it. out and grabs your pinky with his pinky and he's like, <laughs> I got you, Dante. <laughs> I got your thank you. And then he kinda of gets you. he gets a little closer and he's like he, he's like touching his chest and he's like, Are you sure it wasn't the chili? I, I mean I I think it might have been a little bit. I that when I had to go to the bathroom, that was that was pretty bad, I must say. <sighs> wow. Wow. You know, it's not unheard of. They could have manufactured some ingestible form of alien ova that got in through the GI tract and infected you. But probably Came up not. through the loo? <laughs> <laughs> if it's in the food, this means well, it could also be infected. We may have already. a hammer. Well, damn, if I got to go, we I'm going to do it outside. I'm not going to use any of the loose in this place. <laughs> Probably for the best. Well, either way, I say we get proceed to get the heck off of this moon and blast this place. Make it. Let's just turn it into glass. I say, what do you think? It's the only it's the only safe way. It's the only way to be sure. I'm with Zim. Oh, we have a situation as it appears Miss Eckford has fled with her key card. Now, granted, I have changed a password so she can no longer utilize said card to depart, but we are still in need of a key card in order to utilize it to leave ourselves. Why can't we use the space elevator shaft? We would need an access card to utilize uh, it. Oh, okay. Do you, hmm. do you think that if we plug you in and we take one of these leftover access cards that you could program it do you do you remember the binaries i can certainly try i believe i wonder if any of them frozen bodies have a 
still have their personal belongings on and maybe they got an access card. Chaplain, you would know that you could probably hack into these computer systems just as easy as you change that code. Okay. You think you could do it. Chaplain Moyo, you know, as much as care with just eye movement, look around at the group. If we have an extra card, we can attempt that, or we can go to the quarantine area. As Jael says, she has found the frozen body of Colonel Myers. True, we could try to get his key card if we need it. But if they are freezing the individuals and he has become infected, thawing him could have unforeseen consequences. I got ways to deal with that. I say we what? try and at least repli replicate one of these cards here. See if we can find one in here. That way we at least know we have one and then verify it works with the space elevator before we go anywhere else. Okay. So you guys would you guys me. would probably all know that in order to do those types of things, you have to have what's considered the rank of major or above. Uh, in the military. So there's only like a handful of people that were on Fort Nebraska that probably have like all the necessary clearances. I guess we should go mm -hmm. check out uh, the body then. Just to make sure. See if the card is still on him. Perhaps. Iona, please provide me your ID card and I will attempt to code your card to the same rank as the colonel's. Okay. Oh, you you don't have arms. Where do you want me to put this? <laughs> Please, in the reader. Okay. Oh, let's put it in there. Okay, uh, Chappie, make a contact roll. Okay. Just leave it, honey. I'll take care of it. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Not care if you put. Ooh, I am out of story points. So let's see if the dice are with us tonight. Yeah, the last couple of sessions, you guys are burning story points like crazy. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's worth the it. Success! It does it. Yay! So successfully working through the uh, the backdoor systems of the computer, there you've actually changed Iona's rank in the computer system. Huh. Iona is now a major. Feels good. <laughs> You changed mine too? <laughs> I didn't know it was that easy. Can, can you change my salary, my uh, retirement yeah. benefit? Yeah. Does, right. that affect, does that affect the bonus situation? <laughs> Let us worry about that once we have reached the elevator. Yeah. If I do all of that now, you can all just leave my head here and I become trapped. We won't. We would never do that. Oh, look at yeah. that. Look at that. We'll bring you along. We, we you guys, you guys have incentive to take Chaplin's, Chaplin's head with you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I always wanted to get ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We had to. <laughs> if you will carry yeah. me, I will help you navigate to our next destination. All right. I will carry you, Chappie. And, uh, can someone go first, though? I, um, got this card in the, the head and the doors. Yeah. Are you, are you holding him oh. by, like, the hair? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. A, like a lantern. Yeah, like a lantern. <laughs> like, like yeah. a, that's so good. Yeah. I'll take point. I got the rifle out. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, which uh, which direction uh, on the map are you guys going? There's like, like there's only really one place one where one place to get out of where that med lab is, but then you can either go down that hall. There's some A, B, and C something down there, or you could go down there towards the hallway towards the cold storage areas. Um, we know the directions around here. Um, I would say you would know these directions right here. Because of how you come down the ele you came down the elevator already, so you saw there was a way to go past the elevator, okay. um, and you saw there was more hallway to go down the other direction. Now, you could say like honestly, being able to be jacked into the computer and everything, and through through that, 
you could probably you could make another com tech roll if you'd like and i would say that chaplain probably got you know, specs of the whole place yeah let's go for it if you want to do that while you're plugged into the computer oh, why not give it a shot mm-hmm Because I think this this would be the only floor that you guys wouldn't have knowledge of. So, and you do. Hey, Look hey, at that. Right. Chaplain, good for something tonight. <laughs> so, uh, Chaplain will basically just start uh, directing Iona and the group towards cold storage, knowing okay. that that's the only way that we can get to the space elevator. Okay. Wasn't she now in uh, containment staging anyway? Yep. Okay. All right. So I'm going to head that way. Okay. I'll just say, when we depart the med lab, take a left and head back towards the elevator. We will then be passing the elevator and following that hallway to the end. The containment storage area connects us with the loading dock, which will bring us to the space elevator. Gotcha. All right, so you guys can move your tokens uh, in the direction that you guys are moving. I'll put the map up on Twitch so everybody else at home can watch what is happening as it unfolds. And you guys are headed to uh, containment staging. Uh, Zim leading the way down the hall. I'm just going to leave Chaplain Ted just sort of floating off there. Okay, <laughs> you got it. Zim, <laughs> you hands, do so. you do come across two doors that are shut that need key access. You're kind of like your token right now is like in between the two doors. There's like an inner door and then an outer oh. door. Um, so if Iona has her uh, the or the key card, yeah. Iona could walk right up, kind of swipe it, and it will easily open the door now that the uh the systems have been reactivated here at fort nebraska so you guys do that the minute you open the second one you are greeted by three individuals on the other side and i will show you guys who you see you recognize two of them let me try not to grab zim as i reveal so the two that you recognize are Eckfurt and jael Eckfurt looks extremely frustrated. And you also notice an individual standing beside Jael in um, his underwear. The, the pod is laying kind of on the floor against the wall and it is open. Ooh. Uh, and, Zim looks at the... Yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, go, go ahead. Go ahead. You go. I would say he looks at the two of them and then uh, points at the third guy with the uh, with his rifle and says, what's his deal? He with you? He's got an alien in him? Jael looks, no, this is your commander in chief. This is Colonel Myers. And then when you get a closer look at him and you look towards him, you're like, oh yeah, crap, that is Colonel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I believe you uh, advised me that he had been cryogenically frozen. He was. Is he Why had he been frozen? I set him out of the chamber. Uh, no, not why is he thawed? Why was he frozen in the first place? That is a good question. Perhaps you can ask him. And he seems to be, he seems to be kind of dizzy a little bit. Like he's like just catching, you know, he's, he just woke up kind of deal. You can see that over in the corner, there's a little bit of like bile or vomit over in the, the side from where he just gotten out of being frozen and stuff. And it looks like he's going over, there's a couple crates and stuff and he's going over and he's grabbing some just like, looks like some little bit of tactical, like just, you know, Marine gear, like pants and things like that. So he's not walking around in his underwear. Um... There is, like, this black tape wrapped around his left thigh. But he kind of walks away from you guys. It's like, oh, it's so good that we've got some some folks on our side in here. That's great. Can we just leave, like, the five of us 
Six of us plus hammer. Yeah. Can we just leave? Given the situation, I'm not certain his status and why he was frozen. Yeah, but let's leave factory him. answer, I do not feel comfortable permitting him to ascend the elevator with us as he could, in, for all purposes, be infected. Exactly. It runs let's to just... the scanner. It just takes some time, just... though. Let's just go. Like, we're almost there, guys. How are they armed? Yep. How are the three of them armed? One Jai of them has my pulse rifle. Jayo has a pulse rifle that you guys gave her. Um, uh -huh. And Eckford also has kind of like, you know, a machine gun type thing. Are they... Says, they're not... Mm -hmm. They're not... Uh, they're, are they strapped to their back? Are they are they holding them? Are Eck, they Eckford? Are they... Giles is strapped to her back. Eckford is holding hers, but kind of down. Okay, like what she, about the? She's been she's the... been at alert like this whole time. Like she's she's ready for anything to just pop out of the vents. <laughs> Zim is going to step through the door, take a knee, and take aim at the colonel and say, "Sir, congratulations on staying alive this far." I advise you to remain against that wall. My team is moving through this room. And Zim, like, gives a hand motion. Okay. Everybody out. Everybody you're you're pointing your weapon at the colonel? Not, like, at him, at him, but, okay, like, okay. you know, in the, you know, okay. in the vicinity. Okay. Like, at the ready. Okay. Uh, everybody out. We're going. Elevator, go. Great. I've got some Marines to lead me. It's about time. Listen. We can't just go. We've got to blow this whole place off of this moon. Sir, I want to blow it. Agree with you. I want to blow it sky high. Absolutely. Yeah, but nobody's going on the elevator with us unless they've been scanned and confirmed they don't have an alien being inside of them. So, unless you can prove to us that you are not currently infected with a horrific alien monster. You are not coming with us. I'm That's the it. colonel here. I I make the uh I make the uh I do the the bossing around here, private. I would say I come around and then make sure my RPG's loaded and just kinda like lift up my shirt and said, I got scanned, sir. And would that be a banter? <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure. Everybody can relieve two <laughs> points of stress. <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> I, I also want to tell you guys with your role play uh, in the med lab, if you had any damage, you can heal a point of health uh, with okay. that. Uh, unfortunately, Chaplain, you do not get to heal because <laughs> you have to repair yourself with no arms. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I need a mechanic. Listen, Chaplain Marines, Hill. you can trust me, but we gotta blow this place up. We can't leave a trace of any of this for the... We can't We can't even risk it falling into the hands of the UPP. They say that a captain goes down with their ship. So why don't we, like, do that and the rest of us can move along? Colonel, currently I am in charge of this platoon, and in order to ensure the safety of... The remaining individuals atop the elevator. We need to request you either agree to be scanned, or we will not be permitting you to board with us. I'm negotiating with a head. Yeah. <sighs> Yes, sir. I'm a synthetic, and I am the current ranking officer within this team. Welcome to the new normal. But you sir. fall under rank under me, warrant officer, chaplain. I can change that in the computer, apparently. I'm a major now. Sir, the current combat situation has, has yielded a scenario where our... Situational awareness trumps the 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 factor that you outrank us, sir. And so, it is impossible to confirm that we can trust or obey 
anybody, regardless of rank, unless they've been scanned for dangerous alien beings. And that includes you, sir. So unless you want to get in that scanner, you can stay here while we nuke this moon, sir. Standing behind Dante right now and with the map. And so I'm going to whisper to Dante, uh, that's enough words. We need to take action and get the hell out of here. Yeah. Let's move. Let's move and take, let's finish this off and get the hell out of here. I, I agree with you. And Dante's just going to kind of walk through the door, walk around the and other I'll side follow. and kind of walk into the hallway, just completely ignoring everything and just kind of making my way. My Would way? this door be open over here into the hallway? <laughs> uh, that door is not. Uh, and oh. that's, and that's why it seems like Eckford was so frustrated. Looked like Eckford all of a sudden lost the ability to be able to open doors. So I would go up to the door and try and open it and bang it and just kind of like look around and just be like, and just kind of cross my arms and just frustration at this point. <laughs> okay. Um, Hammer kind of walks over oh. to you, Dante, and he's got um, he's got those um, those syringes of narcotics that uh, Eckford had tossed him, and he's got one out, and then he like hands one to you. And he's like. Got time for one more. Here, I'll hold on to it. I don't need it right now. Okay. But no. I might. And, Hammer, and in case you need it, I got your back. And well, Hammer takes it and he goes ahead and he puts it in and goes. Uh, and I just kind of slide it into a secure pouch. Okay, you got it. Um, Jael kind of looks at all of you and, and you, you will hear the colonel kind of, he looks towards Jael and looks to all of you and says fine, I'll go through one of your scanners but let's first let's get this place rigged to blow I think um I think we can easily in the reactor room we could set this place to over overload the power That should probably do it. Right? Can we break the space elevator shaft after we leave? Hmm. It would be kind of of difficult. Oh, okay. And and Jael kind of like looks at the colonel and is like, No, that will never work. Overloading the reactor could take days. Especially on this low a power, the system isn't fully operational yet. Not to mention the nest that we ran into of those creatures that... Well, you can see what they've done to me. There I is... Thought you said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jael Jai- kind of looks at all of you and says, well, there is another way. We could arm one of the warheads with a time detonation in the ammo depot on sublevel two. Someone would have to arm it for precisely eight hours, as it would take probably an hour for us to prepare the elevator, six hours for the elevator to arrive to the station. In an additional hour just to be safe. I so dumb, question. Yeah. dumb question here. Do we not have any nukes up there just to send down? We could spend them all, fly out of here? Unfortunately not. They've all been stored in the station in the ammo depot. I think we should call for the elevator as soon as possible, guys. Like, it's going to take six hours. Let's just call that thing right now. Um, is if we call it now, if anyone remains on this floor, they could take it and strand the rest. Oh, the elevator is already here. Oh, okay. Oh, if we only can, someone I, had a card with access to it, get to it. Eckford glares at you with, like, death glare. Like, you don't even have to be, like, you don't even have to be human to feel this. Chaplain. <laughs> we need to talk to these people. 
I don't know. I think we should leave. Well, I, well they know I, how to set I, the I, nuke. That's I, perhaps we leave them here to set the nuke. Yeah. So let them let them deal with it. Let's go. Yeah. It, it, you know, I'm going to raise my gun and say, step back. You are far too close. Step back and put your guns down. Who, who are you pointing your gun at? Uh, <laughs> let's see. Oh, Iona, you just got a reward redeemed in chat uh, to add your proficiency bonus. Sweet. I don't know how to do that on this kind of rolling, but I appreciate I, it. I will say that on a, on a roll, you can add a die, like another base die to any roll. Nice. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Oh, very nice. Yeah. I'll point, I'll point straight in front of me in, in, uh, at, at jail. I think that's jail. Mm-hmm. Okay, you point you point the gun at Jael. I'm just I got a gun and I'm I'm moving it back between the two of them that are closest that are armed. See, there's we no, need out of here. There's no need Step for the back. hostility gunner, gunnery sergeant. Step we're back. all we're all working together on this. No. No. <laughs> no, that's I ain't going to cut it anymore. You've been already infected. Ham You've already infected the, the the major. And you're trying to you're trying to get us to go along so you can take your money and your infection out of here. Colonel steps up and he's like, "I want to blow the place up. I don't want to take it out of here. I want to get rid of it." Well, go scan yourself and hurry up. I told you I will go through your scanners as soon as we have this place rigged to blow. I want to. I want to see that this is done before your chest bursts. Well, Colonel, the ammo depot, as you're well aware, is on the second level. Enjoy. We will meet you in the medical bay when you have completed your task. He uh. He crosses his arms, and in his in his head, he's like, "Oh yeah, he can't do this anymore." <laughs> <laughs> but um he looks at you all it's like I'm giving you all a direct order a direct order from your colonel of the colonial marine corps to assist in the destruction of this Infected base. Are you all deciding to go AWOL on me now, too? Yes. I'm going to kick the door. And just say, <laughs> I'm already supposed to be out of this outfit. Just open it up. We can get out of here. Call it a day. Wait for a ship. Wait for them to come, and we can just start nuking it with whatever ship comes in. I'm fine with waiting up in space. I am tired. I already had an alien pulled out of me. We already saw the captain die. We've already seen other people die. I'm tired. I just want to go home. It, at that point, Colonel looks at Jael. And Jael kind of turns to all of you. Says, fine. Let's get to the elevator. Nah, you got the order wrong. No, First, until you scan the kernel. And then... We set the bombs, and then we get to the elevator. That's how we're doing it. Precisely. Let's scan the colonel. Excellent. Sir, right this way. Okay. So you I guys... Please, for the colonel. I'm going to walk over to Chaplin and be like, should we scan the other two while we're at it? I mean, might as well just get it all over with. 
Yeah. Photons are Yes. Cheap. So you guys want to scan Jael and Eckford too? You're making Eckford. Why, Why not? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so you bring That's them all a- into the the room. And so go ahead and position yourselves where you would be in the uh, the sub level med lab or the you'd have to go into the quarantine lab to actually get the, the to do the scanning. So I uh, guess would Chappy have to be inside for that? <laughs> if he wants if he wants to run like the, the scans and stuff, he would have to be inside. Okay. Well, technically he wouldn't. Okay. You wouldn't have to be. So it's up to you guys. My gun is still I'm gonna put myself on Overwatch. I don't I don't trust these three. Uh, if okay. Chaplin can run it without being inside the room, that's his preference. I agree. He's pretty sure that they put this guy on ice because he's got something inside him. Okay. So you guys are so who do you so you guys got three people that you'd like to scan. Who do you who do you send in the chamber first? Colonel. Colonel. Colonel goes in first? Okay. Yep. Oh. Okay. And Eckford and Jael are here. So Colonel goes in. Uh he I say we would have Hammer or anyone else who would rather. Somebody basically trained with a gun on Eckford. Okay. Okay. There we go. Maybe right. gonna fry if she tries to run. <laughs> oh, I, that's why I said I was on Overwatch. <laughs> okay, you're on Overwatch. Okay. Uh, Colonel looks like he's kind of taken off, uh, kind of stripping down to his underwear again. Uh, and you see him take that that black tape that was on his thigh. He kind of unwraps that, and there's there's like something wrapped within it, and he sets on like a counter inside the. The, the quarantine uh, chamber and then lays down on the table and chaplain you're getting kind of plugged into the computer on the outside and he lays down inside and the scanning process starts to, to take place as the blue light kind of shimmers within the quarantine uh, lab as the blue light kind of just fades right across from his body and you guys are waiting on for those those things to uh, come across the screen all of a sudden those things start slowly coming off the screen and you can see like this almost like side skeletal view of his head and his his shoulders and stuff coming into the view and at that very moment Jael attacks you chaplain Give me one moment. You're plugged in. Never mind. I don't have you in my hand. <laughs> she's just going to make a close combat roll against you. Basically, she's trying to punch you off of the uh, the place that you're sitting with <laughs> as you're going into the computer. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh no! She goes to try to like to to hit you, but somebody was who was the one you had hammer like you had hammer on Eckford, but Mason was like ready to go and sees this coming and just nudges her last minute and she punches part of the computer. You guys, you guys see this dent form and buttons kind of smash off the computer and this blue electricity just starts going from where she punches. And I would like for all of you to go ahead and click on your tokens. Highlight your token and go ahead and roll initiative. Because it seems like Jael is starting a conflict with you guys. You picky person. <laughs> you miss punching an immobile head. <laughs> and miss Not that I'm not happy about that, because, you know. That was a lot of dice, too. And we've Eckford's a part yeah, of this roll, too. Yeah, roll an initiative. Which one roll is Jael? For me, Mike. Okay, I can yeah, do that. I didn't be on there. Is Jael the uh, Waylon person that we need? Jael was the other synthetic. Yeah. Um, and so- realistically, Eckford we only needed because she had card access. Now Iona has it, so we don't need either of them. Okay. 
Perfect. Right. That's all I needed. Right. Which, <laughs> which one is armed with the pulse rifle? That's Jael. The synthetic. Yeah, she has Dante's pulse rifle. Eckford has, I think, an AK forty forty seven or whatever it is. She has some sort of machine gun. Um, okay, I'm gonna change our music. Something a little it is bit more. It's not putting me on the list for some reason. Oh, it's not putting you on the list either. It oh, said you rolled, I wonder if it's because I have zero health. No, it says you rolled two d six and not initiative for some reason. Oh, why is it? That might be why. Oh, is that what it's saying? Oh, I forgot. I got to add hammer. Hammer time. What is the initiative dice? Isn't that 2d6? No, if you if you go in your character sheet in the middle, there's a there's a button that says initiative dice. Click oh. on that and that'll roll it for you. Uh, Mason. I'll add your first roll was a five, though. Good Lord. I was going to say, what are the odds of all sevens and eights? Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Mason's is in there, too. So I got gunnery sergeant. I got private hammer. I think lower is better. Oh, wow. Lots of sevens and eights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me change the music, and then Hammer will be the first to go. All right. So Mason's in the room, too. We're going to have to kind of, like, theater the mind this because the map isn't the correct size. So you guys will just have to kind of work with me on that. Um First to go is Hammer. Hammer, um, kind of bumping into Jael is like in like melee range right now with Jael. Um, I just want to say thank you, chat. I just saw add your proficiency bonus sent to Chaplain. Oh, oh there you go, Yay! Chaplain. Whoa, and uh, Eric. 40 months subscribed to proficiency bonus. Wow. Whoa. Thank you so nice. much, Eric. We appreciate that. <laughs> Sweet. Okay, so Hammer is going to... He pulls out his combat knife and goes to kind of slash at Jael uh, with this combat knife. Uh-oh. Oh, you know what? He was supposed to lose that stress. So what I'll do is I'll just take those two stress points off because of the banter from before. So I'll ignore the two yellow dice, but he still succeeds with a with a hit uh, with this. And I don't know if Jael has any armor. She does not. So there's no armor roll, so she's going to take uh, two base damage. From this strike, and you can see that uh, the knife kind of sticks into Jael's chest, and a little bit of this white, uh, milky substance starts to leak out as he pulls out, and then there's a little splatter of this, and you can see like the the at the the gouge, the slice. There's these little pieces of like hose and things inside. Can we take her head off and put it on Choppy's head on her body? You totally could. You, you absolutely body, could. <laughs> but now it has a big knife gash in it. <laughs> That's fine. Dead body. Fine. Better than nothing. Um, and then, and then, it Hammer just kind of takes a step back with the combat knife being right next to her. Uh, it's Chappie's turn. Okay, so the uh, portal is still in the scanner, right? Um, technically yes. When she went to attack you, technically yes. Okay, perfect. Um. Kaplan is going to attempt to change the programming back. To to freeze. To freeze him. Oh, yes. Go for it. <laughs> Go to make a calm tech roll. Okay. And thanks to uh, Mr. Misery, I'm going to throw that plus one mod on there. There you go. Oh, nice. yeah. oh. oh my god. <laughs> Holy cow. That's a good roll right there, buddy. <laughs> Devil just as he starts doing it will look just sort of glance over at Jael and say Given your behavior, I think it's best we put the colonel back on ice. And after he says that, you guys hear <laughs> coming from the next room, and you hear <laughs> 
as it's all of a sudden like it's like that that chamber that he was getting, being scanned in is bright blue in color but is being filled with like a frost inside i think that's probably all chaplain can do do you you have stunts for that if you want to take a look at what the stunts are because it only takes one success for it to succeed if you want to check your stunts and see if there's anything interesting you got up to three three stunts wow um i don't think i'll need a roll later for this information um, yeah that's uh, uh based on my freezing the colonel and looking specifically towards like Gile and Eckford, am I able to sort of discern anything from the two of their behaviors? Um, I would say with your with your stunts, what Gile uh, is obviously trying to do whatever she can to defend the Colonel. Um, Eckford, the only thing that you get from her is she is really confused about whose sh side she is on right now. She doesn't seem to know, like, how to respond to this situation right now. Fair enough. <laughs> um, you do know that it might take a couple of rounds for the colonel to be, like, put in a frozen stasis. He might have a chance to kind of escape this, but... Wait, wait I can use one of those stunts to try to keep that thing locked down on him? <laughs> do it half the time I would say I would say I will give him you can do it like in half the time so instead of giving him like multiple chances to get out he might only have this round to try to get out I could do okay. that we'll limit, make it happen a little bit faster yeah you, you, you took the limiter off this thing you're just like <laughs> we're going <laughs> I'm just dumping it in now yeah it wasn't like a gradual freeze it was like there's the temperature <laughs> it's like usually they have to like it's a slow process to make sure you don't get like your body goes into a state of shock or something like that but now it's like pff, just cold <laughs> uh, frostbite. yeah frostbite that's right <laughs> zim you're up what do you do all right uh first i know mason said he was on overwatch so mason do you want to go do you want to use that now or do you want uh zim to keep going yeah, technically, Mason, you can jump in at any time with your Overwatch. Well, I'll shoot the, uh, I'll take the, uh, the shot at her. Pull up my character sheet. Are oh, you going to go ahead and shoot Jael? Yeah. Okay. In the head. Make sure it's in the head. <laughs> it's, I got gotcha. you. I hear you. Um... <laughs> that's how robots work right you just plug one into the other sure it's like one of those things where you have to like you put and then you go and you guys like snap it into yeah. place <laughs> we've all seen this in star wars before <laughs> oh no oh no no oh no oh firing the weapon jael just like just takes a, si a side step Sidesteps the shot, and all these bullets just ping off the back of the wall in the med lab. Would you, uh, would you oh. like to do anything else? Move, or...? Can I, uh... Yeah, I'd like to... I'd just like to ram into her. Okay, like, you could get, like, up to her. You already use your, uh, like, basically... a action to it's attack okay so or All you right. could or you could go out like into the hallway if you want to like get out of the room you could do that because that would be a no i'll stay where i'm at i'm so, on yeah. i want to stay in i want to stay in combat stay in combat with him okay you got it yeah uh, so that brings us to zim on your turn yeah zim if uh if i can get close enough uh i want to draw the combat knife and then do uh close combat attack uh aim for the decapitation move Oh, okay, you got it. <laughs> sure. So you, yeah, you're gonna make your attack with your combat knife. Yeah. Uh, oh, I got a combat knife. 
unfortunately, I had to use my fast action to draw it because I have a talent. Believe. Yeah. Fast oh action. yeah. Oh, look at that! Right at the yeah. neck. Um, slices Jael for um, so it does two base damage, and you have a stunt for your close combat. So if you wanted to look at your, you could either do an extra point of damage, or you could do a stunt. Yeah. Now Jael did have the the weapon. She she has um, a pulse rifle, and she has yeah. uh, it looks like she has like a, a a service pistol and a holster on her hip. I'm gonna make her drop the pulse rifle. Okay. So with your stunt, you make her drop the pulse rifle. So catching this, catching off guard, coming right at the neck, you slash her right across, give this big gouge on the side of the neck. She stumbles, bumps into the side of some computers and things in the med lab, and then the the pulse rifle just falls and skitters across the floor and slides over into the corner. Very good. And he, uh, she's still up. She's got a slash in her chest. She's got this slash across her neck, and it's spewing this white fluid. Yeah. Now it's done. <laughs> and I think that will end your turn, Zim. Yep. 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 And bring us to Dante. All right. I am going to take my M5 RPG launcher, and I am going to... Um, Am I engaged, would you say? Or do I need to move up a little bit? I would say the only person that was engaged when we started was Hammer, but now Zim moved up, so it's like Hammer and Zim are engaged. Only the people that like she was directly next to were engaged. So I'd say you got like 10 feet. Okay, so I'll use a fast move to move up. Okay. Um, and then my I'll use a close combat attack blunt instrument i'm gonna take my rpg launcher and just smash her across the face with it okay <laughs> it's um, here it's got a plus one bonus and i was curious since weapon specialist rpg when using it you get a plus two would it be plus three I will allow it because that's how yes. it, that's how it's written. <laughs> it doesn't say you have to shoot it. <laughs> so it's a uh, close combat three. <laughs> yes. Hey, oh, free man, free one. league. You got to be really specific with your wording sometimes. <laughs> man, one you do hit. So uh, that's a blunt weapon attack. One damage. One. It only does one damage. Yeah, yep. so you all that for nothing. You come up, you oh. smack Jael, you hit her across the face, leaves this it actually starts to you hit her so well it peels some of the flesh away and you can see this like weird like plastic almost skull underneath like where the cheekbone would be. And she just her neck almost gets dislocated for a second, then she like just cracks it back into the place and looks at you. She's still up. Oh, thank you for that, Mr. Misery. Oh, yeah, look at that. Mr. Misery giving Dante an add proficiency bonus. You'd be able to add a die to a roll coming up. All right. Eckford's go. Eckford is worried. She doesn't know what to do. She's at the very back of the room, so she's kind of trapped. She's got to pick a side. Hmm. Eckford pulls out her service pistol with a fast action and fires it towards Jael's head. And technically, oh, she wasn't part, was she part of the banter? No, she was not present for it. She was not no. present for the banter, I don't think. No, so that does hit. Jael, as you guys hear this this gun go off from, from behind you guys, as Eckford is standing there with this pistol with a smoking, uh, smoking barrel, the service pistol does one base damage. So surprisingly enough, that bullet hole 
is in her head and it's leaking fluid, but she is still up <laughs> from that shot. Oh. Iona, you're up. Is there is there any way I can like use close combat to go and try to wrestle like detach her head from her neck? Like do the whole twisty thing. Hmm. Why not? Go ahead. Combat. Okay. That'd be a close combat. Close combat. Yeah, yeah, just a close combat rule. And I'm gonna add my plus one. Do I do a plus one or do I just put one as a modifier? One. I think he just put one. one. I don't think he put the plus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Iona, explain to us how you wrestle wrestle with Jael and remove her head. Alright, so I'm gonna go and like do the girl thing, grab her hair and kinda of just twist it in one direction, just eat her head off. <laughs> there's this there's this strange like sound, it's like it's like a robotic scream. Ah! It's, 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 this thing goes pop and pops the head right off. Now here's the thing. That doesn't do any damage to her. Her body is still standing there. <laughs> You have her head in your hand, and her head is she's still looking at you with a bullet hole in the top of her forehead. Half of her skin peeled away from her cheek. And she's just glaring at you now, Iona, with your you're holding onto her head. Okay. Fatality. <laughs> <laughs> so technically Jael is still in this fight. Okay. Don't put her down near a computer. <laughs> it's it's Jael's turn. Okay. So Jael looks at. You're gonna bite in. your legs off. <laughs> you're gonna bite your legs off. That's it. Um, she basically looks at you, Iona, and looks at you. And says, you are going to regret this decision. I promise you. And her body comes around, and her body tries to punch Iona. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> And hits. <laughs> you can make an armor roll. Okay. Eee. Oh, I think I think punches in this are just one damage, right? I think so. So I think you soak it all. Like like the the punch comes at you and hits you in your armor. You can feel the impact. This is she's strong, but it just knocks you back a little bit. You're able to withstand it. Uh, Colonel Myers um, is doing everything he can to try to escape being frozen again as he's screaming in here in this chamber. So what is he going to do? He doesn't really have anything on him. So he's just going to try to... He's going to try to start like kicking the glass to see if he can break the glass from inside. I'm going to say this is going to be hard, so it's going to be a minus two modification. You're setting that up. I just want to give a shout out to our fairy bit mother, Victoria. Thank you for gifting out five subs. Oh, Victoria. Thank you, fairy bit mother. Thank you so much. The fairy bit mother is here again. <laughs> uh, you guys just hear the pounding from inside the quarantine chamber. The glass does not break. It holds true. Colonel Myers is still inside being frozen. It's getting frosty in there. Uh, at the end of the round, Mason, um, how do, now you said you were holding Overwatch before initiative happened. So I'm assuming that you still get your turn in this round, or does the Overwatch like take your turn? So when I read it, Overwatch takes your slow action, but you still have a fast action. Okay. So you can take Overwatch again. You, you're going to do Overwatch again at the end of your turn? Yeah, do Overwatch again. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. So, um, it looks like Mason getting his gun up and ready, kind of pointing it back at Jael's now headless body that seems to be still moving. And that's where we're going to end at this episode. Oh. Alien RPG. <laughs> <laughs>